أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم Welcome back to my channel and for those of you who are new to my channel I would like to say welcome I am Zoya and here on my channel I like to help and stereotypes about Islam I also like to share my stories and facts about Islam to help in the stereotypes so if you'd like to learn more about me, hear my stories, or learn more about Islam, be sure to click that button down at the bottom that says subscribe and you get more videos as such, inshallah. So first and foremost, before I even start off with saying what I'm going to talk about, I am going to pour my tea for some tea talk, <laughs> inshallah. Okay. Mm. All right, so for today, I'm going to go back to Q&A's, um, question and answering. I have, I think, about four or three questions here on my little um, handy-dandy notebook. If you watch Blue's Clues back when we was children, it's just an inside joke when I was younger. Um, but um, yeah, I have some questions that I'm going to be answering questions about me personally and some may be just a general um some general questions I guess so let's hop right into it so for question number one someone asked how is it with work are you able to pray and how basically how do my co-workers I guess is trying to say how do my co-workers cope with me being Muslim okay so start off with work uh I don't want to say my occupation if you know alhamdulillah if you don't uh inshallah maybe one day we're close enough for me to tell you <laughs> Um, but for my job, uh, basically it was on my end, I was a little, I don't want to say scared, but I didn't know how to tell them. So again, I took my Shahada, um, on April 18th on a Monday and I basically started covering my hair and I put in and told my job about uh two weeks prior to taking my shahada because i thought i was going to take my shahada on eid alhamdulillah but things have changed and i wound up actually taking it earlier than eid because i couldn't wait i just felt like it was a calling and i couldn't wait alhamdulillah um thank allah for choosing me so when i first went to my job and i told them you know i'm thinking about converting um i basically didn't tell them exactly what i was converting to i just said i'm doing a religion change they asked, you know, what will be changes that you'll be making to yourself, uh, you know, pre presentation wise. Um, and I told them I would start covering my hair and I would have to wear longer sleeves. Um, and at first they, they were a little hesitant because they didn't understand, like, what was I doing and why would I be changing some things around? But when I told them that I'm converting to Islam and said that I'll be Muslim, they gave me no problems. Like, I mean, no problems at all. They said, OK. And they just sent everything down and, and they were very cooperative and cool with the idea. Of it. They were trying to find rooms for me to pray in because I am the first Muslim at my job. So they didn't know how to deal with me. But eventually it ended up to them trying to pick a room for me to pray in. Can you just pray like uh, in the bathroom or in the dressing room? And I just said, no, <laughs> like I wasn't tolerating any of that. So they just said, okay, so we're fine to else. Originally, they found uh, one room. It did have windows in it, but it had enough space for me to pray in. So I'm I'm so easy to please, like, alhamdulillah. So I was going to take that room until my supervisor basically came and said, hey, I think I have a better room for you. And he opened up this room, and the room was not big, but it was perfect for me. It was a little small-looking room, and I could fit the mat in the direction that tablet is and what made me even more happy is that the room had enough space for me to pray and the room had a sink and it had no windows so if people are walking past they can't see me praying it was just so private and I love that about the room and I still have that room the only people that had the room to uh, the key to the room were supervisors so it came a little discouraging when the supervisor wasn't in on time or they called out and I couldn't get to the prayer room but if it was a case like that and the supervisor didn't have the key, they will easily tell me, oh, oh, is there somewhere else you can pray? I say there's a mosque. And they go, OK, you can go. Just go to the mosque and pray. Um, but it came down to them originally now giving me my own key. So I'm the like only one besides the supervisors that have the key to that room. 
and I go in there and I pray faithfully and on time, alhamdulillah, and I have a sink in there so I can easily perform and um, make my wudu and, and there's no windows and I have privacy, subhanAllah. So that goes to um, me with my job and how they adapt it to my change. In addition to that, my coworkers are awesome. Like no one judged me. They act the same. Like I said in a previous video, it was more so me being standoffish and kind of because of my un um, me being uncomfortable with the hijab and automatically assuming that they didn't like me because of that. But uh, it, I really turned out to realize that, you know, self-evaluation, that it was actually me who was being standoffish. But um, I came back around and they are really, really sweet. They understand. Um, there's one time when I couldn't make it back to the station for prayer because we were uh, in the midst of things. And I told my coworkers, like, I really have to pray. And we were outside and they said, well, do you have a mat? I said, yes. And they said, okay, we could pull the cars around you. And they really like put the cars to block me. And then anywhere that people can see me that the um, cars were not blocking, they actually put their bodies there and they had their backs towards me. And so I can pray. But then the supervisor came over and said, what are you guys doing? And I said, I, I need to pray. And he goes, oh, no, absolutely not. Like, no, get your stuff. Just please go, go, go to the, um, go pray at the, at the place I'm supposed to pray at. And he goes, no, it's okay. Like, I don't want you in the street doing that. If you're uncomfortable, or if you feel, and it was so great that, you know, I have so many people supporting me at my job. So I hope I answered that question with how the, um, my coworkers and how did my job adapt. They are so understanding and alhamdulillah. And I want to wish and pray that everyone have a great job where their coworkers and their supervisors are understanding of the religion I mean, and may they be, be comfortable with their religion. Um, I mean, um, and it goes to the next question. Um, do you have to make up prayers after menses? So, uh, I get this a lot of questions a lot. I get it from my coworker. I get a lot of questions from coworkers. SubhanAllah. Like I said, I love when people ask me questions because it helps in the stereotypes about Islam. I love it. Ask me as much as you can. If I don't know, alhamdulillah, I go to my teachers or I go to some of the sisters who can get questions for me, answers for me, and I bring it back to them. But ask these questions to me so I can find the answer and give it to you besides of you just creating stereotypes about Islam. That's the purpose of my channel, alhamdulillah. Um, so about the menses thing. So I'm in the, um, I am in school, and again, I go to the Hanifi school, um, and about the menses, is, I'm not going to actually make this whole video about menses because it could become a very uncomfortable topic, especially if I have men subscribers. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. But so to answer this question, just get back into it. Do I have to make up prayers at the menses? No. Do you know how much prayers that would be? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Listen, Allah is simple and Allah is so easy. He's easy. Allah. Allah Akbar. He's easy. So easy. And he doesn't make it hard for us just because we are women. Like to have our cycle is like all I create us to have a break from everything. You know, women, we go through a lot of stuff with dealing with children. I don't have none, but may Allah grant us all beautiful and healthy children. Those of us who do not have and those who do have, may Allah grant our children long lives and, and happiness and health and direct them on a straight path in Islam. I mean, but. You know, we deal with things emotionally with husbands, with children and working and, you know, do, keeping up with the house. And then we have our menses. And, you know, a, a lot of stuff is a, is a bear. It's, it's a lot on us. And Allah says, again, like my favorite uh, verse in our Baqarah, like Allah will not put more on us than we will bear. So when we have our menses, I look at it like Allah's given us a break. Like he's given us a break. Like, you know, re relax your body. So. Do I have to make up prayers after menses? Absolutely not. Like, <laughs> you know, like, according to my school, Hanifi school, we have uh, 10 days maximum to clear for menses. After that, you don't have your menses. But it's like you, you, you do your cycle. After you do your cycle, you just continue the prayer. You, you make it also, of course, you do your purification bath um, with intentions. And then you just go back into Fajr and, and Dua and you just go right back into it. You don't have to make up prayers because if you look at it and you add it up oh my it's, it's it's a lot like we have five prayers a day um alhamdulillah if you if your cycle continues for 10 days that's 
five times 10 is 50 prayers that you will have to make up in additional to the prayer that you started. So if I'm back and I'm done with my menses and I'm back on Fajr, uh, uh, I'm back on Monday and I have five prayers to make, I have to make up 55 prayers. Do you think Allah will make it that hard for us? Like, no, you don't. But um, I must say this, during the holy month of Ramadan, when you have your menses, you don't have to make up prayers, but you have to make up your fast. So during the month of Ramadan, um, we fast, of course, for those that don't know. And if you have your menses for seven days, six days, two days, three days, however long you have it, um, you have to document that so that when it's over, you continue Ramadan. And when Ramadan is done, eat Mubarak, after that, you make up those fasts. So if you last for seven days, you have seven days that you should be fasting. Um, there might be more details. I'm pretty sure my brothers and sisters will definitely clear it up and give me more information because they're doing an awesome job with correcting me and telling me to be on my dean more and get more research. Alhamdulillah. May Allah reward those who are keeping me on track. I mean, but um, to answer this question, no, you don't have to make up prayers after your menses. Just get over your period when you're done and get back on track, speaking to Allah, fasting Monday and Thursday, as sunnah, alhamdulillah, and, and just keep up with that. Okay, and then for the third and final question, I think that's the third and final question. This one is a little bit tough. Okay, so it says, what have you learned thus far? Um, in general, I've learned how to be a better me. I've learned how to be a better daughter. I've learned how to be a better granddaughter. I've learned how to be a better cousin, a better sister, and a better and better coworker and a better friend. I have matured uh, tremendously. So I've been told, and so I feel like myself, I have matured. So um, that's with that. Um, Material-wise and knowledge-wise, I'm still learning. It's hard. But <laughs> But I'm still learning and I love learning. So I want to share with you, uh, since I'm so vulnerable around you guys, you're my family, my brothers and sisters, I would like to share with you some things I have learned. So these past days in class, I have learned, well, I'm supposed to have learned 10, 15 hadiths, but I've learned 10 hadiths and I would like to share them with you. Uh, I'm going to share five with you, not 10 because I'll be here forever. Um, trying to figure it out, but I have some of them in my head, but I can only say it in English right now. I'm still learning how to say it in Arabic. So with the five hadiths I have learned, I will probably post down the, the book that I've gotten hadiths from, but these are, this is what I study in my class. So for hadith number one, and I'll stuff a lot if I'm not getting these correctly, like word for word, but I get a picture of it. Okay, I'm going to keep this as a raw footage so you can actually see that this is hard to remember. <laughs> okay, so what I've learned is hadith number one. The religion Islam is to act with sincerity. Number two, supplication is the essence of worship. Number three, a person will be with whom he loves. Number four, um, a person with whom he loves. Um, number four, calmness and polite deliberation is from Allah. Haste is from Shaitan. Number five, gatherings are to be kept in confidence. So that's the five hadiths that I've learned, and it means a lot to me because I can relate to all of them. Subhanallah. But um, as you can see, it's hard for me <laughs> to remember. So just and, you know, my teacher said, you know, it's good to remember in English, but remember it's, it, it's more viable and it means more when you learn it in Arabic. So inshallah, please make dua for me that I will get it in Arabic and get it down pat, inshallah. And um, as for surahs, I know one surah by heart. Uh, just one I know. Um, and that is surah al-ikhlas. And I can recite that to you as well, inshallah. Um, Okay, let's, let's just be vulnerable on each other. Just give it a go, okay? <laughs> All right, Surah Ikhlas. All right, All right. so, I will be Lahi Mina Rajim, Bismillahi Rahman Rahim. Fuhu Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, Lam Yalid, Walam Yulad, 
walem yaku lahu kufuan ahad. I think I said it right. Uh, but I do know how to read it. <laughs> so I just want to just show that, like, if I can read it. Okay. It's an app that I use. Uh, if you can see it right without the camera just, like, interrupting it, which I think it definitely will. The light, not the camera, the light will interrupt it. But I'm <clears throat> saying reading it is way better. Uh, but I do know this. So I, uh, this is a class. Um, I know this is uh, Sora 112. And I have a little bit of one, um, 113 and a little bit of 114, just down a little bit. But I'm going to share with you guys because, alhamdulillah, my, my beautiful sister Huda has been teaching me and working with me. May Allah reward her and give her everything her heart desires. I can't stress enough. I mean, she's amazing. She's so patient with me and she works with me one-on-one, subhanAllah. So, okay, so yeah, I can read it. Um, it's, um, so it says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Manerahim. Hul Huwallahu Ahad. Allahu Samad. Lam Yalid. Walam Yulad. Walam Yakul Lahu Kufuan Ahad. And for uh, Surah Al Falak, this is one thirteen. And I have a little bit of that down pack. I'm only going to say the ones that I know the meaning of. So I'm going to read it and say the meaning because, alhamdulillah, uh, inshallah, I can do that. Okay? Just um, two sentences that I know for sure. The other ones, I'm still learning. So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falak. So it says, say, I seek refuge Rabbi, in the Lord of daybreak. Um, and then the next one is, uh, min shari. I always get that word wrong, but shari, I think, inshallah. Ma khalek, um, men, um, from. Uh, shari is evil and halak is create um, and mal is he so I guess this um, um, from evil he created or he create and that's what I'm going to say because I'm still learning and I don't want to give false information so please do your research I'm just learning I'm just trying to show you what I'm learning but I do know um, this is my favorite one I love reciting El Nas um, let's give it a try just the first one but uh, it says, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin And that's saying, say, I seek refuge and Lord from the people. Malikin That's saying the king of the people. Ilahinas, that's saying God of the people. Um, and Al Nas is basically the people, and I love that one because it's it's kind of a, a lot of bit easy to say, and I understand it. So, Alhamdulillah, I'm learning, <laughs> and I'm so excited to learn. I'm just so happy. Like like I said, I I love when um my teachers teach me, and I get it, and it just makes me even more happy. But um, that's all of the questions that I've answered and some of the things that I'm, I have been learning that I want to share with you guys. And I will keep on showing you my progress because I notice I have not been showing my progress on my channel. I've just been talking about stories and not showing exactly what I'm doing here. So I hope that you enjoyed the content of this video. I hope that I've answered questions. If you have any more questions, please email me, my sisters and brothers. Please email me. Don't Go under the comments and write a whole story about, you know, like um, what I should learn and stuff like that, because it's just a lot. Like, if you want to tell me your story and you want me to share your story, email me. My email will be down in the description box. And I look forward to hearing from you guys, inshallah. So I would like to leave with saying, may Allah reward you guys for helping me. May Allah give you guys healing if you need some type of healing, fast and speedy recovery. For those of us who are in debt, may Allah 
please grant us the, the, the sufficient finances to be able to clear that debt, especially before we all um, enter the grave. Um, may Allah keep us on a straight path. May Allah guide us and forgive us and spare his mercy on us. I mean, until next time, I will see you not next Monday, but the following Monday. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.